everyone. How are you doing? Yolanda with the Bates Memorial Children's Church Three Need Ministry. What does that stand for? Do you have church? Are you the children's church? Do you have Bible study? And do you have what? Go ahead and say it. Do you have prayer? So I'm here and so excited on this wonderful Wednesday to be with you guys. We just had our Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday lesson. And so we're going to go and dig a little bit more deeper in what we, um, what I shared on Sunday. So parents, I want to say thank you so much uh, for letting the kids be here with us at our Children's Church 3D Ministry. For those that are viewing for the very first time, I say welcome and uh, thank you for taking the time to come with us and share in word. And uh, my prayer is that you be truly blessed. So we want to make sure that we are ready to receive the word of God. Children and all of those that are out there on the sound of my voice, we want to make sure that we have our what? Our Bible and that we have our bodies uh, positioned in front of the camera so there will be no distractions and that we have our brain ready to receive the word of God. All righty. So we're going to go ahead and let us go to God in prayer. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes, okay? All righty. Father God, we thank you for this Wednesday. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given us on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. You are truly alive within us and in this world. Lord, we just thank you so much for your word uh, that you have given us on Sunday. Now, Lord, we want to dig a little deeper and apply the word to our lives. So my prayer is that those that are viewing, Lord, you would open their hearts and minds in such a way that they will be able to receive and be granted understanding of your word. Lord, bless their families, bless their health, bless their finances, Bless their dreams and their purpose that you have for their lives, oh, Father God. And just bless this time together that we're coming together. Use me just to do your will, speak your mighty word, and let it go out and bless as you've already said it to do. Lord, I love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All righty. So we did have our question of the week, and we will be answering that on the, the end of our time. I want to know if you did your Bible challenge. John chapter what? 20. Reading the whole entire chapter. I pray and hope you did. And maybe it was some individuals out there. What? You went a little farther. And I encourage you to go a little farther to read Colossians chapter what? one in its entirety. And I'm going to tell you guys, when you read that word, there's no way you can read it and read it to understand it. And God don't move in your life. So I just encourage you, uh, those that are not reading, start reading. Those who have kind of slacked off a little bit, get back in there. It's not too late. We always can do better. Don't beat yourself up, but just get back in there and start opening that word each and every day and let God bless you, speak to you, and just do some amazing things in your life like you really truly want to live that abundant life. All righty. So, we did speak about uh, on Sunday about Easter. We did say that we basically call it Resurrection Sunday, right? Because Jesus rode on the rose on the third day. Uh, we talked about God's big story, and this Easter, uh, the Easter Sunday of His resurrection, is the big story. Why? I think, really believe what I'm heart, because God want to do big things in your life, my life, and everybody else's life. Okay? So we talked about. Uh, they went to the tomb and Jesus went there because Jesus has risen, okay? And then now we're going to talk about the, uh, uh, talk a little bit more about the life Jesus lived. And we talked a little bit more about the death and we talked about his resurrection really on Sunday. So let's focus really on the life that Jesus lived when he was here on earth. We know that Jesus, he healed. We know that he blessed the children. He was, was just totally a focus on teaching the people, all his disciples and those who gathered to hear the word of God. And he also, he walked on water, he fed uh, 5,000 people 
and some with two fish and five loaves of bread. Yep, miracle. Mm -hmm. He turned water into wine. Oh, yes, he did. So he did some amazing things. That's why it's so important because there's so many great stories in the Bible to be able to help us on this journey as we live for Christ. And one thing I want to share with you guys is that when I'm going through something or just things may be happening in my life, and it don't mean necessarily has to be bad, but even those bad things too, it has a way that when I open my Bible for that particular day, God has a word for me at that particular time. And I'll be like, whoa, and that's the Holy Spirit moving and letting me know in in a way that I'm here with you. Don't worry, I got you. And then it has a way that at times it has me, it gives me a sense of direction and even what to do sometimes with those situations, okay? So it's a blessing. That's why I want you to experience that. I want God to change your life, change you, because there's so many big things that God wants to do in your life life. Okay. So the life, let's look at the healing. Okay. God healed so many people in the Bible. Yes, he did. He did a lot of healing. He gave sight to blind men. He uh, healed people who had uh, was sick, people who was demon possessed. He even raised individuals from the their death. They was dead and he brought them back to life. So how can we apply that those things to our life? Let's just look at healing. First off, you have to read and believe, okay? It, it goes hand in hand. You must read the word of God and believe. You won't know that the things Jesus can do unless you read it, okay? Unless you hear the preaching of the word. And as you study in the word of God, and then once you do that, you start believing. The Holy Spirit start moving. And you start developing the relationship with Christ. You find yourself talking to God throughout the day. And, and, and you develop this yearn of, of wanting to come closer and closer to God. You start fearing God in a way, not being scared of God. But fearing God is to shun everything away that is not of God. Okay? Wanting to please God in all things that you do. And that's where it comes, where you start asking God, Lord, this is going on in my life. Lord, I have an illness. And you ask God to heal you. You ask God to intervene. You ask God to take control. And that's how God starts to move in your life. So he healed, and you are healed by faith, by believing, okay? So that's where they come. Okay, Jesus fed uh, 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread, okay? He took that and he blessed it and he trusts God and he fed all these people. It, that's called a what? Anybody know what that's called? That's called a miracle. Yes, it's called a miracle. And Jesus is op still operating in miracles today, but it's based on our faith and our belief in what we believe in Jesus Christ. And it comes back again. You got to uh, read that word engage in that word and let that word become your very life amen because the word is powerful the word changes you and so uh miracles do happen the bible says uh, jesus god is the same god yesterday today and forevermore he never changed it's it's up to us whether we're ready to change and become more like him so miracles are there I've seen him. He's done miracles over and over again in my life, and I want that for you. But who wants it more? God wants it more than anything in your life, more than than, than your, your, your spouse, your children, your friend. God wants it more. Okay, so Jesus blessed the children. There was a lesson in the Bible where he had, I think we spoke, we, I talked on uh, that lesson where parents had brought their children to see Jesus and the disciples was rebuking him, telling them that Jesus didn't have time. And Jesus, you know, knew of it and said, oh, hold on, hold on, don't do that. No, the kingdom of God is for them, such little kids as they. And the Bible said that he took them in his arm and he blessed them. So let your children come to church. Let your children be raised 
in the fear of God and knowing that God loves them. Let them come to Sunday school. Let them be engaged in activities so that they can grow up as a child, not have to wait till they become an adult, but as a child. And, and the Bible says what? Train up a child in the way it should go. So let that child be trained up in, in the Lord. Uh, and with uh, reading the word and living the word out in their very young lives. Okay, we talked about Jesus walking, walking on water. That's, a, that's one of my favorite stories, Jesus walking on water. And if those of you all don't know, you know, they was in a ship, the, 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 the disciples, and they were afraid. And uh, a storm had came upon the, 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 uh, the, the uh, river. And the waves got high and it was storming, it was taking the boat and it was tossed and they was afraid. And all of a sudden the Bible tells us that Jesus came walking on water. And see, I love this because when we are in trouble, Jesus will come out of nowhere. You can't trace God, you guys. You can't say, okay, God's going to come this way. He did it this way. He's going to do it again. No, no, he will not. But one thing I will tell you, God will always be on time. But he came in the mix out of in the mix of their storm where they were frightening in the storm. So let's look let's just take the storms in our lives. You know, when somebody lose their job, children, maybe Maybe a storm was that you couldn't go back to school. You had to go virtual. You didn't want to. That could have been a storm. But Jesus will, will come into your life at a time if you allow him and you're in his word and you got a relationship to him with him. He will come into your life and he will be there to guide you, to rescue you, to comfort you, to just let you know that he loves you and he's right there. And the Bible also says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Sometimes it feels like God is nowhere, but you better believe it. He's there. When you can't trace him, you can't feel him, and you sure enough can't see him, he's always there. Amen? So God will show up in the time of our lives when we've been tested and when trials and tribulations come. He will be there as he did when he walked on water and he walking towards the boat that was tossing and turning the disciples in the boat, his disciples in the boat afraid. And the Bible says that one of the disciples called out, Jesus, if it is you, allow me to walk out there to you on water as well. And I love God. Guess what? Peter gave the request and Jesus answered it and told him, come. Now listen to this. When Peter start to come, he was walking on water just like Jesus. But the Bible tells us that the wind started wailing and, 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 and blowing hard. And the Bible said that Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and started looking at the wind. And the Bible said that he started to sink. Now let's stop there. He was walking on water. As he was focused on Jesus, okay, focused on Jesus, had his eyes on Jesus, his mind stayed fast on Jesus. But as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, the Bible said he started to what? He started to sink. Now, that's a huge blessing for us that no matter what's going on in our life, no matter what, what the world and our trials and tribulation may be taking us, but guess what? Our job and our uh our job is to stay focused on God. Keep our eyes, our mind on the Lord, no matter how bad things get. And guess what? God calls a miracle to come in our life. But guess what? God didn't let Peter sink because the Bible says as soon as Peter started sinking, he realized it. He hollered out, save me, Jesus. And Jesus took him up. So my thing is, is when we've got ourselves in trouble, God still will come and pull us out of it. We just got to pray and have faith to say that when we call on God, save me, guess what? We got to believe that he will. Amen to that. So God wants to do some amazing things. He came to men what went wrong in our relationship by dying on the cross, the blood of Jesus, the blood from Jesus dying on the cross uh, to save us from our sin and that we will live this life of peace and abundantly with relationship with Jesus Christ. How about that? Amen. So 
ask yourself the question, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you? If you don't, start today by just reading his word and say, Lord, I want to know you for who you are. And guess what? He will let you know. All righty, I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and give you this question of the week and see if you all got it right. I hope you all uh, looked that up in Psalms 8 and 9. And it says, Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the what? In all the earth. You got it. All righty. Now, some translation may read different, but look at the simple words because those words can mean the same thing. But Oh Lord, how, oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. His name is majestic in all the earth. All righty. So, had a wonderful time with you guys. Just continue to read your word, start your personal relationship with the Lord, uh, and ask God just to show you who he really is and be ready. Because guess what? He's going to blow your mind and blow your life into a beautiful uh, way in the way he tend. And I'm going to tell you, you are never going to turn back again. So let us close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time of just learning how you want to be amazing in our life. You want to bring healing. You want to be what we may be a short of finances, Lord. You want to bless our lives in such a way. You want to do uh, um, miracles, oh Lord. And, and I just thank you, Father God, for the relationship that I have for you, with you. And I pray for all of those that have a relationship with you as well. Lord, bless their lives real good. And for those that are going to call upon your name and want to know you, show, want you to show them who you are, my prayer is that they will receive you after that is Lord and Savior and start this wonderful journey living for you. Until next time, Lord, keep everyone safe, keep them blessed, and keep them living according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, I had a wonderful time with you guys. So I hope to see you all on Sunday and continue to stay masked up, stay your distance, make sure you wash your hands because brighter days are coming. Be obedient and uh, follow the rules that we know is right for us, okay? All righty, you take care. See ya. Love you. Bye-bye.